This brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. We're talking about the book of Ephesians this morning. Actually, we're talking about Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Philemon. These are books that Paul wrote from prison, the prison uh, epistles, if you please. And we're going to look here at some things. Paul talks about the dispensations in uh, the uh, uh, book of... Uh, there are five names in Scripture, he says, about the five dispensations. He's telling the Ephesians about these dispensations. By the way, what we're looking at here is we're looking at the things that God wants the children, the new children of God. He wants them, and he's using Paul to write the letter, to know about him and to know about the things that work. Now, you've got to remember, uh, we didn't have TV and, and we didn't have computers. We didn't have all that stuff back in those days. So what had to be done was a person had to that was studied out, that knew about it, that had the access to study and to know about these things, to be able to pass them on, repeat them, or rewrite them in a manner to where they could be understood. And from the, uh, the great uh, abyss or the great uh, karyosa, how the, the earth was in, was, uh, was shooken up, was all out of shape, and it was covered by water, and God came and spoke the new heavens and the new earth into existence, and he took his hands and divided the water from the water in Genesis. And that was the dispensation of innocence in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam and Eve were put on the earth. They were put on the earth in innocence. They were naked and didn't know it. They were like two little boys and girls uh, in a bathtub, uh, three years old, and they're splashing each other and throwing a rubber duck and doing things. And it makes no difference to them that they're naked. They're not even, they have no thought about that. And Adam and Eve didn't either. They were innocent. That was the time of innocence. And then there was the dispensation of conscience. That was where, after they uh, sinned, they became conscious of what they would, what they had done, and now they have to live by the skin of their teeth, or the the power of their brain, or their their thinking of uh, what like, what can I do as a human? Before God did all of the the uh, gave them all of the thinking that they needed. They didn't need to think about uh, whether the conscience, whether I was doing bad or good. All their conscience was clean. There was no such a thing as bad. There was no evil present with them, in them. There was no presence of evil in them. They took on that presence of evil. And then we had the dispensation, Genesis chapter 9. Uh, Paul's telling the Ephesians here that we have the dispensation of government. And there was a government, governmental dispensation. If you please, we live in the, the dispensation of the church age today, but there is also a government dispensation today that we live in. We live under a governmental dispensation. And then Genesis 12 and Exodus was the dispensation of promise. A promise. God promised to take the children of Israel to bless them throughout their whole entire history of the world. And a matter of fact, the word forever is used many times by God forever. After your seed, Abraham, forever. After your seed, Isaac, forever. After your seed, Jacob, forever. After your seed, David, forever. God used thee forever many, many times. We had then the dispensation in Exodus all the way up till we get to Matthew of the law. Now, the law, Jesus was the finisher. He was first the author of the law. He also was the finisher of the law. If he started it, he had a right to finish it. And he did start it, by the way. God, Jesus said not, God didn't do anything, nothing. Not one single solitary thing did God ever do that I was not involved in. He said, I was with him before there was a was in chapter 8 of Proverbs. 
Jesus said, I was with God before anything was. And I, and matter of fact, Jesus was the spokesman for God. When, a, when you heard a verbal statement from God, except this is my beloved son, I believe it is the only time that God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Uh, those couple times that God spoke that, that was the, the speaking of God that was audible to man that man could hear. Other than that, God came in a wicked force. He came in a shaking of the mountain and fire and a cloud of smoke. And uh, um, so Jesus was the mouthpiece for God. He was the Word in the beginning, and He was with God. And when God said, let us make man in our own image, He was talking to the Son and then the Holy Spirit. Now, we had the dispensation of the law, which I said, which Jesus brought the law on, and Jesus fulfilled the law. He finished it. And so it was done with in one foul swoop. The second Jesus said, it is finished on the cross. When he said, it is finished, bam, it was finished. Right then, never more to have to be used again. The law was done away with. That veil that was made in the temple or in the tabernacle, either one, that veil was rent from top to bottom. No more to be ever used again. No more animal sacrifice would ever have to be taken again. He said the blood of bulls and goats was temporary. Was a temporary thing. And by, by the way, if you do believe in a purgatory, there was a purgatory in the Bible for a period of time. It was called Abraham's bosom. And that was where the people that followed the law, that, that were going to be God's chosen people forever, to come back on the earth at a later date, uh, those from the Jewish nation and any Gentile that followed in that, that fell in that category, was uh, going to be they were in paradise. Well, when Jesus uh, went to the heart of the earth after he walked through hell and took the keys of death and hell from the devil, he scooped up paradise. He brought paradise up with him. He stopped here on the earth for a few minutes. And he turned some of those Old Testament saints loose. And they ran around the earth for a little bit. And they were seen of many, many people. And it was an actual fact. And he took the blood to the Father. And he sprinkled it on the mercy seat uh, before God. And then he could take paradise up. You see, those people in paradise had only been covered by the shedding of the blood of an animal. And now, the true shedding of blood, Jesus Christ, once and for all, the finished work of the Savior was to go to the cross and shed that blood, that pure, 100% pure blood of righteousness that would cover the sin forever. Didn't cover the sin, by the way, it did not cover the sin. Jesus' blood did not cover sin. Jesus' blood removed sin. Removed it. To cover up something, you could dig it back up. But to remove it, it's no longer there. And so that was what Jesus did. And by the way, that was the dispensation of grace. That in Matthew started the dispensation of grace. You and I live in a dispensation called grace. We live under mercy and grace. We are under the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and mercy. And then there is the dispensation of the divine government. And that is in the millennial. Revelation 20, 20 through 50 says there's going to be a divine government. There's going to be a government run by a divine person. And that person is going to be Jesus Christ. He is going to be the head and the light of the new city, Jerusalem. And by the way, the new heaven and the new earth, he is going to be the light of the new heaven and the new earth. He himself, Jesus, is light. He is light. At no point and no time do you ever see uh, the picture of Jesus in heaven that you don't see the picture of the light of heaven. He is the light. And like I say, and I said before, and, and he is the one that blessed us. He's the one that chose us. He's the one that redeemed us. He's the one that made us acceptable 
in the eye, arms and eyes of God that we can get in and we can be cradled in the arms of God. By the way, I am cradled today in the arms of God. You say, well, what's happening around you, Pete? What's happening around you, Pete? Do you have some problem, physical problems, other things around you? Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> if you're a human being, you're going to have those. The thing about it is, is who's going to carry the load? You're going to let Jesus carry the load? You're going to try to carry it. If you try to carry it, it won't work. you got to let Jesus carry the load. Let God carry the load. And he'll, he'll do it. Let's see what they say. He redeemed us. All right. And he abounded toward us. While we were yet sinners, he abounded toward us. And then he made, he made known unto us the mystery of this book, the Bible. You say, well, Brother Peter, you kind of said those things in that last... Uh, utterance that you did you uh, you said those same things well they need to be said over and over again you cannot say these things too many times we do we have a reason to pray yes we do we need to pray we need to not only pray for ourselves but we need to pray for others we need to pray there are others that are in worse shape than we are perhaps and so we need to be in uh, always in close pursuit of getting closer and closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the object of prayer is to commune with God. That's the way we commune with God the Father. And we must have boldness. If we don't have boldness, we can't speak about God the Father and about Jesus the Son. And we can't go out of the house. I can't go out of the house tomorrow morning and witness to people if I don't have boldness to do it. How do I get that boldness? I get it through practice and practice and more practice and praying and praying and more praying and digging in and digging in and digging in. Uh, listen, you know what I am? Verse 20 of the last book of Ephesians says, verse 20 says, uh, for which I am an ambassador. In bonds therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. I ought to speak boldly. Jesus saved me from a devil's hell. Don't you think I ought to speak boldly? Don't you think if I'm an ambassador, I ought to dress like an ambassador? Don't you think I ought to talk like an ambassador? Don't you think I ought to act like an ambassador? Uh, it's just here where I live, it's uh, 3.30 uh, in the morning. I got up this morning, combed my hair, washed my face. Should have shaved, but didn't. Uh, I didn't want to wake my wife up. But uh, put a good shirt and tie on. I'm an ambassador. I'm supposed to look like one, act like one, be one. You're supposed to be what you're supposed to be. Are you what you're supposed to be? But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. A beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things. He sent this guy. Tychius to send to tell them some things and they were supposed to live in whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that you might know our affairs and that you might comfort your hearts peace be with you brethren and love faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace be all be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ and sincerity and the word amen by the way is truly 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 it is truth amen means this is the truth truly this is truly the truth and that's what amen means and when you say amen and then he said in the sincerity of the Lord Jesus Christ do you live sincerely in the Lord Jesus Christ? Or do you haphazard live in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you haphazard live, period? You need to have a direction in your life. You're only going to find it in the Bible. You're only going to find it through Jesus Christ. You're only going to find it by real, really meaning what you say and saying what you mean. Get in, will you? If you're going to get in, get in. Get in all the way so that you can get the mystery, so that you can get what you need, and you can find it in this Bible, the Bible, and, and I, I prefer the King James Version, and I'll tell you what,
God will bless you if you get in the King James Version. Ask God for the knowledge of it. I got to go now. See you next time.